if you spend any time on the internet doing anything, there's a very good chance you're running into things that are written using a language known as JavaScript. And in this video, and in many videos from here on out, you're going to learn a lot more about what makes JavaScript so cool, and more importantly, how to actually write your own JavaScript, how to make your own applications and websites that are interactive and fun to use and just generally awesome. So let's get started. So the thing about JavaScript is that it's pretty much everywhere. You don't have to look very hard or dig too deep to find examples of JavaScript in a lot of the websites that you end up using. Let's take a look at a few examples. So if you ever use Google Maps and liked how it is so cool to navigate around, then there's a little bit of JavaScript somewhere behind the scenes that gives you all this functionality that you tend to love. Twitter, sites that you might think is very content centric, you basically are just browsing through pages and pages of text. There's a whole lot of interactivity that goes on behind the scenes. For example, let me just start typing in something under the search field and all this information that is suddenly updating and disappearing is all done as a result of some JavaScript going on behind the scenes. And of course, if you ever had to play any games in the browser, like a classic, like let's say cut the rope, all this interactivity and these animations and all the, you know, the fun stuff that makes this game exciting, all this stuff is done by JavaScript as well. So the thing to keep in mind, and let's go back to our, to our slides, the examples you saw had one major thing in common. They were all web documents made up of HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, where all this HTML and the CSS and the JavaScript work together to end up creating the things that you saw and were able to interact with. And of those three, while well, they're all very important, the thing we care about the most is JavaScript part. After all, that's why you and I are both here to get an introduction to all of that. JavaScript is capable of doing a whole lot of things. At a high level, it provides what is known as interactivity. You have your HTML document, you're interacting with it in some fashion. It could be you just loaded the page for the first time, or you're using your mouse and keyboard to do something to the contents of that page. Doesn't matter, but whatever you do, there's often JavaScript that is running behind the scenes to both interpret what your actions are and then react to it by either, in the case of Google Maps, displaying more of the map as you're zooming in, zooming out, and panning, or in the case of Twitter, as I'm searching in the search field for a particular topic, fetch some data from the server and update the document with the results. And of course, the ultimate example of interactivity is a, a game, like Cut the Rope, where as I'm dragging the mouse across, let's say a rope, that rope gets cut and animation plays, and if I have my sound turned on, you hear sound, all sorts of good stuff. Basically, JavaScript is, in many ways, the, an accelerant for all the cool things that you can do in the browser that go well beyond what HTML and CSS are capable of. And with that said, let's now pivot a little bit and look at JavaScript in the form of a language that you can actually do things with. So you know that JavaScript is a programming language, and it's a programming language that is very similar to other languages you may have heard about, like C Sharp or Java, or let's say Pascal, where you have a lot of English looking words that are strung together, arranged in a fashion to tell your computer what to do. So here's an example of what JavaScript looks like. And remember, don't worry if none of this stuff makes sense. You will know all of this and more by the time you are done with the set of videos that we're gonna be looking at shortly. But here's an example where you have, you know, some words like var, which don't really make much sense. But here you have the word default name, that, that's English, equals you know, JavaScript, English again. You have some words called function and if and else. And you have a lot of things that if you look at it, it sort of, sort of looks like you're reading a terrible book or a poorly translated book. And, but some of the things do make sense though. You do have English words interspersed with some bizarre characters and symbols, but that's okay. They're part of what makes this language tick and you will learn to I'm not going to say you're going to learn to love what, these language, what this language does, but you'll just appreciate some of the, the quirks that it brings. Okay, what we're going to do next may sound scary, but it's really not. We're going to write some JavaScript to build a very, very, very simple example of everything working. So let's get started. What you're going to need first is some kind of an HTML editor that allows you to create JavaScript content. 
Now, I'm not going to go into great detail about all the various HTML editors out there that you can use to, you know, type in your HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. But my favorite is Visual Studio. And here I have Visual Studio running, where I have, as you can see right now, a very simple HTML page. It's your doc type, you have some HTML tags, and you have a body element and a title. But for the most part, nothing is really exciting going on here. Let me go, and go ahead and hit play, just to show you what this page does. So the page is currently, currently running. Once this page loads, you'll basically see nothing. And given the markup you see here, that totally makes sense. You know, your page has nothing really going on for it. Let's go and fix that. So inside your body tag, let's add a heading tag. Let's just call this my first Java script example. And let's go ahead and just preview what this page looks like right now. And once I typed in, notice that now you see my first JavaScript example. So at least we know that this is all working, at least for the HTML side. So let's go ahead and display some JavaScript. And what I want to do in JavaScript this time around is just display a simple dialogue that just says, hello world. You know, let's make this your typical hello world example that you've probably seen and used many times in the past. So the way you write JavaScript is by first declaring an HTML tag that is going to act as the container for your JavaScript. And that tag is known as a script element. So I'm going to type in script and at the opening and closing tags. So inside the script element is where your JavaScript will live. We'll look at more of, you know, more ways of getting JavaScript into your document later, but the way we're going to do that is by writing the JavaScript directly in line into this document itself. So what I'm going to do is, like I mentioned, I want to display a dialog that displays some text. And the way you display a dialog in JavaScript is by using what's known as a function. And this function is known as alert. So type in the word alert, add the, add the opening parentheses, and I'm going to go ahead and just type in hello, comma, world, and make sure to wrap what you're writing inside quotation marks. You know, these quotation marks indicate that what you're displaying inside of them is, a, is something text-based, more formally known as a string. And we'll get to, we'll cover some of that shortly. And after you type that in, add your closing parentheses and add a semicolon. These are all just quirks of how JavaScript expects your various lines of code, your various statements to actually look like. So it's best you don't fight it and just do whatever JavaScript expects you to do. All right, so I've gone ahead and added my script tag, added my alert function, and added some text that says, hello world. Great. Now let me go ahead and refresh my page. When I refresh my page, notice what happens. You get a dialog that says, hello world, which is exactly what you've seen here. Now, let's just, you know, since we're already here, let's make some other changes. Hello world seems very boring. I mean, that's what people have been doing for decades. Let's change it to just displaying your name. So in my case, I'm going to put my name in here. Let me make sure I spelled it correctly. All right. And if I refresh the page now, notice now you see the name appearing. So take a few moments and just, just play around with whatever you see here. You can type in numbers like, you know, well, that's not a number, 1952, just an arbitrary number there. And if I refresh, you can see you know, your number, numerical information showing up. It's actually showing up as a string, but it doesn't matter. We'll deal with all that stuff, stuff you know, shortly. And just you know, take a few moments, just get familiar with just doing all kinds of things that you can see here. You can even mix and match numbers and strings, but we'll cover all that, all that later. So with that, you've really just done something pretty epic. You just created your first JavaScript application that a few moments ago, you might not have known how to do. I just type in my first JavaScript application, add a few exclamation marks, extra ones, just to drive the point in. So in this video, we really just scratch the surface of what you can do with JavaScript. So just continue playing around with the example that you have in your code editor right now, and we will come back and do far more cooler things with JavaScript in future videos. So with that, if you want to learn more about this or read the text-based version 
of this particular video, just go to crib.com and search for JavaScript introduction. If you ever need any help or need to run some ideas by other people or even me, you can post in the forums on crib.com slash forum. You can find me on Twitter, on Facebook, and YouTube. I'm always there, so just you know, feel free to you know, ping me in whatever way it's convenient for you. And then last, if you found this video exciting, definitely take a look at my book, JS 101 JavaScript for Beginners. It's really designed to help you learn all about JavaScript from the introduction all the way to some of the more crazy and awesome things that I kind of told you earlier the language will allow you to do. You can find this book in paperback and Kindle editions on amazon.com. So with that, I will see you all later.